time. <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right, I think that it's clear from the video that students have, have definitely had an amazing time the past two weeks, and I think they've learned a lot. Um, and before we bring the students on stage, I want to welcome the mastermind of this whole program to the stage. Uh, Dr. Rachel Slabaugh is an assistant professor here at UC Berkeley in the nuclear engineering department. Her research is in computa computational methods for neutron transport, which for those of us who don't play with supercomputers all day, um, she likes to explain it as she builds better hammers so other people can build better houses. Um, Professor Slabaugh is the lead for the nuclear energy focus area of the Nuclear Science and Security Consortium. She is a senior fellow at the Berkeley Institute for Data Science and was invited this year to join the Department of Energy's Nuclear Energy Advisory Council Committee. Uh, so please help me uh, welcome Professor Slabaugh to the stage. <laughs> of mute. Yes, it's making noise. Okay, good. All right. So thank you so much for joining. This, is, this has been a marvelous adventure. Um, and I'm going to give a, a few short remarks. Um, so the space race was a fantastic scientific, political, and monetary challenge that captivated the world. I didn't get to contribute to that adventure because while it officially started on my birthday, it was nearly 30 years before I was born. <laughs> um, fortunately, there's a new race today that I would argue is even larger and even more important, the energy race. For my birthday this year, I got to take a big stride forward in the energy race. And I hope that you are all here to join me. When I say the energy race, I mean the race to emit less air pollution while increasing the amount of energy produced on Earth. We need those things to happen together so that we can enhance people's lives by moving people out of energy poverty and reducing the number of people who die as a result of air pollution, which is one in eight, by the way. And we also need to limit climate change, ocean acidification, and the myriad of other potentially disastrous environmental impacts that are a result of air pollution. When I say that I got to take a big stride forward in this race, I mean this boot camp. This workshop may seem, this event may seem like just another wrap up of just another workshop. That's not what this is. This closing event is taking a new stand for clean energy. This is an expression of what can be done when a few people have a crazy idea and pursue it with passion. This boot camp is my startup. <laughs> I never expected to have a startup. <laughs> At this time last year, I wasn't sure what I found inspiring, and it was unclear to me how I was contributing. I would not have described myself as part of nuclear innovation in any way. Then, in November of 2015, Todd Allen invited me to a small dinner to a discussion of nuclear innovation. And I turned that invitation down because I didn't understand why I was invited. <laughs> and Susie Baker <laughs> talked me into it and explained why I needed to be there. <laughs> and this dinner, it turned out, was a brainstorming event for how to increase the effectiveness of the Gateway for Accelerated Innovation in Nuclear, or GAIN, an initiative that came out of the White House that month to enable private companies to innovate in nuclear energy more easily by making public resources available to private companies. In the midst of that dinner, I realized that we were at the edge of the most exciting time that nuclear had seen in a very long time. I realized that this conversation is about so much more than technical innovation. It is about changing the whole nuclear story, the whole nuclear sector, to better reflect our values and to better solve the problems we are facing. And that dinner eventually led to the creation of this nuclear innovation boot camp. 
Now, you've heard and seen um, about DOE's leadership and the support of our sponsors and all the fantastic students who are here and have made this a reality. However, I want to share my story of the boot camp, how we built this effort in a few short months, and what my vision is for the future. That dinner was a rediscovery of purpose for me. It was a call to action, and it was the opportunity to change something that I had really been waiting for. To support GAIN, I suggested we start a nuclear startup incubator or accelerator to help create more startups and to support those startups so that they would be more likely to succeed. That suggestion was met with, great! How do we do that? What do we need? What comes next? And I said, well, I have no idea. Uh, so I got into action. Um, I started calling everyone I knew who did startups and incubators and accelerators and clean tech. I interviewed people, I emailed people, I toured labs, I read articles, I went to innovation events and everyone was confused why there was a nuclear engineer there. <laughs> um, and through that process, and thank you to everyone who answered my questions and gave me time and energy, it became clear to me that we not only need to support new startups, but we actually need to transform the workforce. We need people to start and work at startups. We need people in labs and industry to be excited to work together. We need people within all parts of nuclear to embrace moving forward, to question assumptions, to be agile, and to want to do things differently. We need to shift how we think about communication and how we see ourselves in terms of other clean energy sources. We need to embrace the diversity of ideas and approaches that characterizes what is special about innovation. I was also unwilling to wait. I wanted to take action immediately. Not after submitting a response to a request for information, to get a funding opportunity announcement, to submit a proposal, to get funded, to start a thing in 2018. <laughs> so in mid-February, I proposed this boot camp to a small group of co-conspirators. And that's how this whole thing started. I had an idea I thought was too important not to do, regardless of what was advisable. And I managed to get enough people to think that that half-baked idea, I'm totally in the thing, that that half-baked idea was good enough to form a team. And then we started doing all of the things. People told me this was a bad idea, that I was shooting for something too big, that it was too difficult, that I couldn't pull it off that we should do it differently, and that this was definitely not going to help me get tenure. <laughs> they were all correct. <laughs> and I pursued my vision anyway, because I thought it was more important than any other way I could spend my time. And for those of you who know me, that's a pretty strong statement. And as a bit of a side that I think is, is relevant, I'd like to talk about how for me personally, this was crazy. I was already doing my day job, professor at Berkeley, no big deal. I was already also doing consulting work for a startup in my endeavor to learn firsthand what this nuclear innovation thing is all about. I was also already in an intensive leadership program attempting to level up my leadership so I could play a bigger role in this new and expanding opportunity for clean energy. I definitely did not have time. There were additional reasons beyond time why this was crazy. For example, I was in no way qualified to do any of this and I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I do applied math combined with computer science. <laughs> I build better hammers. I've never wanted to start a company and I do not know anything about entrepreneurship. I have never seen a business plan. <laughs> And I had to make every choice about the vision for this boot camp without any background whatsoever. <laughs> that was terrifying. It was extra terrifying because this was a very big risk for me. This was time and energy that I didn't have to waste. I'm supposed to be getting tenure. <laughs> um, and it has been very uncomfortable talking about this boot camp instead of my research. 
I spoke to a captive audience at a reactor physics conference luncheon about the boot camp and not my technical work. As a woman, that was uncomfortable. Um, and so not only is this potentially costing me tenure, it, it also is a big risk for my reputation. While the boot camp is a huge chance to make a difference, if it doesn't work, then it would be another example of an ineffective effort to change something in nuclear and a very visible failure for me. And through all of that fear and anxiety, I charged forward. At the outset, every single decision about what this needed to look like was mine. I put together the curriculum. I wrote the advertisements and announcements. I decided this year should be only for students. I decided it should include undergrads and grads. I decided what the application process would look like. I decided how we would choose students, how many students, what the mentor program needed to look like, that we needed a mentor program. I decided how long the program should be. I made up a budget. And the momentum began to build and things began to come together. We got more interest and excitement than I possibly could have imagined. The industry, the students, and the community were hungry for this to happen. The boot camp really was meeting a need that nuclear didn't seem to know that it had. It was fantastic. And it wasn't easy. And it wasn't perfect. So remember how all this was on top of my day job and all that other stuff? In about April, I pretty much fell apart. Um, I stopped being able to work for more than two hours at a time because I would get crippling neck and shoulder pain. Um, my tank was empty. I was starting to get sick. Some of you who were at Pfizer remember I didn't actually show up at Pfizer because I was in my hotel room sick. Um, and I, I was just burning out. Um, and I didn't handle that as responsibly as I would have liked. Um, I did start to work less. I wrote to my acupuncturist friend and said, I need help. And at our first meeting, she said, yeah, you're going to have to come back once a week. You're going to have to stop biking. You are going to have to start eating animal products. You need to sleep. <laughs> By the way, my official I live in California card is my acupuncturist wants me to start eating meat. <laughs> and, and at a similar time, we found out that we were getting less help planning about a third of the curriculum than we originally thought. So now we needed to identify many more speakers ourselves for the entrepreneurship part of the curriculum, which is the part I know the least about and where I have the fewest connections. So this is the point in the story where the startup should have failed. And if it had only been me, it would have. But it wasn't only me. This is the moment where it went from my boot camp to our boot camp. And when I say they, oh, I have, right, our boot camp. I have the most amazing team. And they stepped in to make sure that this happened. By the way, not everybody's name is on here. Um, and, and when I say they, I mean Kathy Shield. Um, more than any other person. This is when Kathy stepped in and stepped up to make sure that this thing that was an adventure about to go off the rails became a professional quality program. She's a hero. Also, my fantastic research group did not disintegrate or mutiny. Thank you, I love you guys. <laughs> and amazingly, plans went on and, and continued to grow. Our other team members, Tim Crook, Sarah Harmon, Carolyn Hughes, Susie Baker, all ramped up as we needed them and made remarkable contributions. We raised, thanks to Todd, $40,000. And with our shoestring budget, we have 64 speakers, over 50 mentors, all of whom donated their time and energy, and over 70 companies participating in this boot camp. We have 25 students from 19 universities and 10 countries. Our entire event is zero waste green certified by UC Berkeley. Out of those plans, we had five team design projects that turned out to be extraordinary. We have students who learned so much more 
than they ever imagined in an, in an environment that even I didn't think possible. They came in expecting to learn about entrepreneurship, innovation, and nuclear technology. It turns out they also learned about teamwork, how to take an idea from zero to pitch, that it's okay to fail, and that for us to win, everybody's gotta contribute. Some thought this program would look a bit insulated and uninspired. I think some thought it would be bland. And it wasn't. This program has been unprecedented. The quality has been incredible. And I'm enormously proud of everyone who participated. What really matters, though, is the impact. We did all of this to make a difference. We did this to revolutionize what is possible in clean energy. The bottom line is no one else is coming to save our climate or to rescue the nuclear sector. We are the people. This is our responsibility. And like me going, to this in, going into this boot camp, we aren't really prepared or ready. And that doesn't matter. <laughs> we have to do it anyway. We have to do this with every tool that we have. We are all nuclear innovators in education, in policy, in reactors and fuel and waste management, in communication and engagement. And more and more of us are checking two or three of those boxes, crossing boundaries to better solve problems. We are reaching out and collaborating when we don't have all the skills that we need to tackle the challenges we know that we need to solve. So this was my startup with the goal of transforming the way nuclear thinks about itself and the way the rest of the world thinks about us. We have to if we're gonna win this energy race. So I took a risk on this boot camp when my plate was too full. And, and I didn't care because this is too important. These students and speakers and mentors and sponsors also took a risk by joining us for a brand new program and my goal has become our goal. There is a lot of space here with me. There is a lot of space here with us. There is room for so much leadership. There is so much ground to be taken. And now is the time. We, all of us, we are the ones. I've spent my whole life preparing for this. This is what I'm here for. And I cannot wait to see what we do next. Thank you.